you. Yes, the clan knows me. The guild also knows me. But I, being unable to decipher such large numbers, will calmly state that I am known as such. My life is a calm one, and I am but a minuscule and tasty ant within a large cone. I bear a burden not many salamanders can face, one that you can only be accepted of by asking, in which a sacred cloth is tossed upon your slimy skin. This cloth is, of course, your calling. An ancient item alchemized throughout this time, rumored to have once been an item of the heir himself. Having spent much time documenting his windy escapades throughout the land, this shocks us. We, the very people of his soil, have been bestowed an item of most importance. One that we believe holds the very magic of our kind. Not all the magic, of course. It is simply an amplifier for our wizardry, our secret art. And we are grateful to not only him for being the origin, but to his ghostly servant for being the washing person. She, no, no, get yourself together, sir. You cannot mess up. You killed his counter. She, Knowing he had been through much hardship, kindly laundered his oil-stained garbs, her blue ghostly powers leaving the robes to shine anew. And thus, the Rag of Souls was born. Yes. I think that should be good for next, next week's Secret Wizard meeting. Yes. We shall be having the robes the... No, stop. We shall be having the air beholding our robes in no time. Guys, let me let me go out and try to find a bar in this place. So I'll be right back. Don't worry about me. So I've entered the game. It's only just been this long. My head's starting to hurt already. I haven't had a drink in so long. Something's wrong with me. I don't know what it is. But I almost killed my best friend. Jane. I I found her. She was dead. And I tried to kiss her. I held her. Look. Her body was so cold that I couldn't do anything. I don't know what's wrong with me. I just Something, something hurt my chest. And I couldn't save her. I couldn't do it. I don't know what's wrong with me. Calliope, you're up there watching over us all. If you could please help me. Show me what to do. Callie, trying to be sure it's taking a lot of time. Knowing her, she's probably looking for a bar. I should go find her. I'm so sorry. I couldn't help you. Whoa! Jane! Jada! Hey, Jane, how you doing? Um, hey, I, I, I think I found a bar or something over there. Come on, let's go party. Come on, Jane. Foxy, are you crying? Keep crying. Jane, Jane, you're pretty funny, you know. Uh, I, I think... Jake likes those kind of girls, you know, funny girls and all. You died, Jane. You died. And I don't know why, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't kick you back to life, Jane. I, I don't know what's wrong with me, Jane. I, what kind of a friend would do that to their friend? I, I, I don't know what's wrong with you, Jane. I, I'm serious. Jane, you almost died because of me. I almost killed you, Jane, because I was a coward. And I was a horrible friend to Jane. I'm so sorry. Rocky, stop. You're not a horrible friend. Look, you, you get drunk all, sometimes and you go off on your own. But all that matters is that you try to save me. I mean, you're still a good friend. You're one of my best friends, so please, don't cry. You're such a good friend. Please, Roxy. It's okay. You tried. Did you do it? Do what? 
You might as well cry home to mommy right now, Junior. No one's here to save you, and no one's here to tell you whether this is the real McCoy. You know, whether you do come back as a god, or whether it was all a ruse to get you to have the death. The especially dead kind of death. You know, the kind without a ghost. The kind that puts you right on track for a rendezvous with your dead bro. Who would have thought that... The creation of a new universe would involve so much sacrifice and destruction. It feels like two timelines ago I was helping Harley go frog hunting, or saving John from Teasy's dumb advice. When we started this, didn't we think that we were doing something right and cool and proactive, saving the world and all that crap? Sitting here looking at our deathbeds, I don't think that I'm ready to risk our lives it's at the risk of dooming everyone else. Rose, if we don't come back, if we don't come back as gods, then all of this fighting, the frog collecting, the fetch modus allocating, the alchemizing, the sports metaphors, all of it will have been for nothing. I don't want you to die forever, Rose. If only one of us comes out of this alive, and that one of us is me, I don't know what else. Huh? You're ready to become a god. And I'm just... Stop. Right. Could you just... Take my hand, please? Okay, so a lot of things have been happening on this ship. And actually, most of them are really, really good. Like, like, like me and Dave Sprite. Alright, so, so when he actually first asked me out, he was really shy, but he's a bird, so, you know, of course he's like, Come, come, I'm a bird! But he, he actually has another side to him, and it's, it's really, really sweet, and he was really shy, and so after he asked me, he took my hand, and we went out to the front of the ship, and we flew off, and... Yeah, there was a bunch of green lights, but it, it was still romantic. He tried, and you know, that's, that's honestly what counts. And, you know, so then after that, we went on, like, kind of many dates, because you can't really actually leave the ship. But, so, one day, he made me lunch. And Bird's but he made me lunch. You know, and it was really, really sweet. And, fun fact, Dave Sprite likes to cuddle. He, like, takes your head 
and he like puts it on his shoulder, and then he like nuzzles up in here side because he's still a bird, and he's like ruffles up his neck feathers and all the other stuff like that. And okay, so you all know the feather on the couch. All right, honestly, he put it there so that way maybe John can unlodge a stick in his butt because he's been a huge butt lately. But you know that's okay because that would be made out on the couch or anything. No, you know that's another fact for another day. Unfortunately, that's not a thing anymore. We're not together. We had a talk, and we both came to a realization that I'm not her, he's not him. And it's not right to use each other, so we figured it would be best if, you know, we parted ways. And everything's okay now, like, we're still really good friends and such, but... I'm still kind of worried because the last thing he had said to me was, I need to be by myself alone in a room. And yeah, normally that's how Dave acts, but I have a sneaking suspicion that something else is wrong. And I just really hope he's going to be okay. Did I do it? I think I did it. I think I stopped the doomed timeline. I think I used all my power. But I think we're safe. I think they'll be safe. I, I, I think that possibly everyone will be all right now. That my prophecy was wrong. And that's okay. Because... I'm willing to be wrong, even if I was a complete dick about it earlier, and a complete bold flicker, but they're all going to be okay. He'll be all right. Ah, ah, ah it hurt. It, uh, too much. So maybe I used a little too much, but it was all, I needed all of it, every bit of it. I needed to save them. I had to do this. I, I had to. So maybe it makes sense that I'm heir of doom. Because in protecting them from doom, I doom myself. If I really doom myself, then, well, I'm a jerk. Because they're all going to go. They'll all survive. At least, I hope so. I can't see anymore, so I'm not sure. But, if they all survive, then everything will be okay. And... Ah! It's alright. It's alright. But I'm a jerk. Because I'm abandoning them. Go play the game yourself. Go try and win yourself. I'm itching. All right. So what now? What? Even, I can't even, my nervous system is breaking down. All right. In that case, that means I have to do one thing. If I can, if I, if I'm abandoning them, if I'm leaving them behind, I have to hold on to something. One thing. Anything. Because they're more important than me. They mean the universe. Because they are the universe that they're going to go win and create a new universe. But the, what? It, it, ah! Crap. Shit. If that's the case, then I need something. Even if it's one sentence, one phrase, one word that I can keep, that I can give to them, even if I'm abandoning them. One word. I, I just have to say to all of you, to all of you, even if you forget me, even if I was worthless in the end, I'm sorry. I hope, I, I, I hope, I think, I, I hope, I, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I, I'm sorry, sorry.
please, I think maybe you'll understand. I'll teach the R. Hey, hey, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everything. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Recognized. I don't want to be on the sidelines anymore. But how can I do that if I can't even help myself? Wait, I can. I'll tell Carcat. I'll go find him and tell him I love him. And he doesn't have to like me back or anything, but I think he deserves to know. Oh boy. Hey, did Carcat? Have you seen Carcat? No, he's over there. Things to throw down than whose hair sounds better or who wore it first. You scared you too. Sound like you've been up to your Oculus Punch Club and problem. Yeah. Tell me about it. Well, you know, Clark Cat, if you need somebody to talk to, I can listen. I mean, I had my own thing I wanted to talk about, but your thing is more important. You can go first. Uh, are you sure? I'm uh, positive. I mean, you went out of your way to find me. I'm positive. Alright, well. This is going to be a long one, so you might want to hold on to something. Look, uh, I'll only be a knight in shining armor and grab you a chair.
He deserves so much better and I never should have even entertained the thought that he might love me. Or even like me for that matter. Trizzy's really such a wonderful troll. She'll make him so happy though. They'll be so perfect together and I'll just... Oh! Oh! I'm sorry. Oh God! God, I'll just... I'll pretend this never happened! And I never went looking for him! And I never found him and he never asked me for advice and... I'll just... I'm still waiting to tell him I love him! That's all I'm doing! I'm waiting to tell Carcat I love him and... Oh God! He loves Terezi! He loves Terezi! He loves Terezi! He loves Terezi! He Forgive me. It's my entire fault. I set you on this path. And look where it led you. Please forgive me for my moment of weakness. When I saw you, just a small, tiny creature, pretty beaten down by a world that despises you. My boy. Forgive me for seeing the stars in your eyes and believing. Please forgive me for teaching you right or wrong. For listening to your dreams and supporting you. Please forgive me for teaching you to be loved and to love in return. For being a foolish sense of hope for the new changed world, and I knew exactly how cruel this world can be. My boy, please forgive me for letting you ever be hurt. You know, dream bubbles aren't so bad. I mean, I still used to be with all my friends here. And I used to be with Ethelia still. And when I'm not with him, I'm with Pounce. And we go on tons and tons of adventures on Lolcat and all different dream bubbles. Because here you can go from place to place to place. So it was harder to see everyone. But now, everyone is here. Well, not exactly, I guess. They're all a little different. Because most of them aren't from the same timeline I am. Most of them aren't dreamers either. But I have Car Kitty now. Not my car kitty, of course. He's looking for his Nepeta. Because he went got here, and that's how he died. Was saving her. And even though he's not exactly the same, it's still really nice to be around him. Because sometimes Eccle is busy with his Aradia box, and Pounce still sleeps a lot. Kitty's always there, and we go all different places looking for his Nepeta, because I promised I would help him find her, because he deserves to be with her too.